Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Marcel Plays RCT, a series where I play through a different rollercoaster tycoon scenario every episode. I thought a nice place to start would be the ultimate classic rollercoaster tycoon 1 scenario, Forest Frontiers. The park consists of a small empty clearing in a forest and the goal is to get 250 guests and a park rating of 600 at the end of year 1, so it's a rather short and easy scenario. Not only is the goal very basic, but so are the ride and scenery selections. You start off with only very basic ride types and you can't even unlock any scenery themes other than the basic 6 that you have in every scenario. You can still build some very neat parks with just those options though. The first thing I decided to build is of course a merry-go-round. It's almost a law that you have to start with a merry-go-round if you can. This is so classic that there even is a myth that the music attracts more guests, but I'm afraid that that isn't true. For the decoration I've gone with small flower beds, which is another absolute classic. Put a fence around it and add some decorative trees and we have a lovely looking merry-go-round. Now that we have a ride to attract guests, it's time for our first roller coaster, which will be a junior coaster. This is a nice simple coaster type to start out with and is pretty good for when you're just learning how to build your own custom coaster designs. With the ability to do a curved lift hill, you can easily make a junior coaster very compact. The first drop height of only 7 units above the ground makes sure that the train doesn't go fast enough for the ride to get super intense, no matter what you do. I like to include lots of turns in my junior coasters and keep them fairly short and small, like this design I've just built. Because it's a roller coaster, we can charge quite a bit for it, but since we don't have access to the cash machine, I'm going to keep it reasonable at 5 euros. With this coaster completed now and more guests in the park, we need some stalls. Instead of just putting them directly on the main path, I'm going to build a little food court. It's going to be the stalls in the middle surrounded by two bits of water with brick walls and fountains in it. The two empty spaces are for future stalls when we unlock them, like the information kiosk. Back to the junior coaster. It looks nice, but it's a bit bare, so let's decorate it with some trees. I am a massive fan of the yellow and pink trees, and they mix really well together. Add in the tree with the silver stem, and we have ourselves a lovely looking set of trees. And since we're busy building trees now anyway, we might as well build a few small ones around the food court to spice it up as well. Now that that's done, we're going to build the most important ride of the park, a terrible tiny car ride. You see, this car ride is incredibly boring with no stat higher than 0.3. Anyone who has the courage to sit through that boredom has to be rewarded for that. Their reward will be the best thing ever, a trip to the local drowning pond. Because the bureaucrats downtown don't really like this, we have to limit the throughput by setting it to only one car and a minimum waiting time of 60 seconds, otherwise the park rating will suffer. I think the time has come to build our first big boy ride, a wooden roller coaster. If you're ever looking for a ride that is easy to make look good, build a wooden coaster. Most of the time you don't even need to decorate it at all to make it look decent. We will decorate this later though, but first I want to talk a bit about the design itself. The height of the first and only chain lift hill is 13 units, which is exactly equal to a steep drop with two steep track pieces in the middle. This is on purpose, as it limits the ride both in intensity and cost. Because I only get a certain amount of speed from that first drop, I cannot make the ride too long, meaning it won't be too intense and also won't be too expensive. This is a really good way to improve your coaster building if your coasters are always way too intense and expensive. This is the finished design and I'm really quite proud of it. It really is just a couple of hills and turns but it already looks quite good. With a few decorations like some walls and roofs, two tunnels, a pond and some trees it looks pretty awesome. At the end I've added a bunch of horse statues because well they're cool. Even though we have just built an awesome wooden coaster, the park rating isn't doing so great. 
Unfortunately, the theme park inspectors aren't really very fond of my drowning pond, so I'm going to have to reduce the frequency of the ride even more by raising the minimum waiting time to 120 seconds. The park now has two gentle rides and two coasters, so it's only logical that we add two thrill rides. They will fit nicely inside this little loop of path. We only have the twist and pirate ship available, so we have no other choice but to go for those two. Not the most exciting thrill rides, but they do look nice. In the decoration process, I kinda treated both rides as one, and I think the rows of trees around it bind them together nicely. The tent entrance, or tentrance, and exit buildings along with complementary roof pieces over the path add some nice spice to it. There are three iconic coaster types in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, which are the Junior Coaster, the Wooden Coaster, and the one that we have just unlocked, the Looping Coaster. A design I used to build a lot when I was a kid was the Shuttle Loop. I remember spamming it everywhere in scenarios like Diamond Heights and Leafy Lake. To honor that, I want to build a better, more exciting version of the shuttle loop in this park. This design will have two vertical loops instead of one, and also a bunny hop between the loops and the spike. Not only that, but there will actually be two of them, so that they can be synchronized. To give them a bit of a modern look, they're going to get the black with a brightly colored edge color scheme. I've chosen red and yellow, and the trains are the opposite color of the track that they're on. Rides like these are great money makers, they are cheap, have a decent throughput of up to 2000 guests per hour, and are very simple to build. To make it even more exciting, I've built a path through one of the loops. Imagine how cool it must be to stand on that path with the train going all around you. With these rides completed, I've come to the realization that I completely forgot to name any of the rides, so let's do that right now. The merry-go-round will be a horse tornado, because it's horses that are tornading. The junior coaster will be Snake Junior, because I couldn't come up with anything better. For the wooden coaster, I thought the name Big Hard Wood fits nicely, because it's rather big and made of wood that is pretty hard, considering it's supporting the entire coaster. The car ride will be called Sweet Release of Death, because that's what the guests are finally getting, and the Twist and Pirate Ship are called Lamest Thrill Ride Ever, and Look Mom, I'm a Pirate, respectively. Lastly, the Super Shuttle Loops are called exactly just that, with Track 1 and Track 2 added at the end to distinguish them. With that done, it's time to build a water ride, which will once again be a classic, the Log Flume. There is a nice bit of space left at the back of the park where it can interact with the super shuttle loops. I didn't really have a plan for this so I just built random hills and turns and I think it turned out quite nicely in the end. A couple of fountains and some tall trees turned it into a nice calm log flume ride among the treetops. Because the area around the car ride is still a bit bare I decided to extend this selection of trees to there which neatly fills up the space. Now there is only one empty bit of park left, which is between the Junior and Wooden Coaster. Here I'm going to build one more iconic ride, in the form of a spiral slide, before finishing the park by adding a nice little pond with some bushes lining the shore. And that is the park. Three roller coasters, three gentle rides, two thrill rides, one water ride and six stalls. I'm really quite happy with how this turned out, considering I only had about 50 minutes to build it and I had no plan whatsoever beforehand. The goal was to get 250 guests and with just over 700 guests we have easily beaten that. Despite the drowning of about 50 guests over the span of the entire year, we still have over 600 park rating as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video and the idea of the series as a whole. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.